The two teams that dominated English football last season begin the pursuit of European trophies tonight. For Howard Wilkinson and Alec Ferguson, fresh fields to conquer. For Leeds, the prospect of a fortune in the European Cup. Initial opposition comes from Stuttgart, last day winners of the Bundesliga. But psychological advantage for Leeds, who beat the Germans pre-season. Manchester United play their 100th game in Europe tonight, 25 years after winning the European Cup. Two years ago, Mark Hughes' scoring ability won the Cup Winners' Cup. Now it's the UEFA Cup for United and the challenge of completing a full set of European trophies. Hello, good evening and welcome to a new season of the European Match. As ever, live and exclusive coverage of the matches that really matter in Europe. At the Necker Stadium in Stuttgart, Leeds United take on the German champions in the European Cup. And at Old Trafford, Manchester United begin their European season against Torpedo Moscow in the UEFA Cup. And joining me tonight, Johnny Giles, a man who played with both sides. Welcome, John. Okay. Looking forward to this one. Yes. Uh, Stuttgart, we saw in the pre-season game uh, at Leeds, and you can never go by pre-season games, but they looked a very useful side, didn't they? Well, I think any team that wins the German League have got to be useful. Uh, I think in this particular match, both sides wouldn't be too happy with the defending. Leeds here cut out on a, on a run, but uh, Walter showing great pace to leave the, I think it's Speed and uh, White behind. Uh, but I think both sides will have learned from that. I can't see Leeds on that tonight. But that little fella, Fritz Walter, was a leading goal scorer in the Bundesliga last year. So I think Leeds United have got to be careful of him tonight, that's for sure. Yeah, well, they can't do that tonight. Eh? They can't do what they did there tonight. You don't think? Well, let's find out uh, what the teams are. So let's join our commentary team over there in Stuttgart, Ron Atkinson and Brian Moore. Well, good evening to you all from uh, Stuttgart. Let's quickly take a check on the two teams then. Stuttgart, who are liberally uh, spiced by international players. The foremost among them is their captain, Guido Buchwald. 56 caps, including one in last summer's European Championship final against Denmark. Michael Fronzek, the left back, is another current international. Watch out too for Fritz Walter, one of Germany's most consistent scorers, some 141st division goals, but never has he won a cup. Walter is likely to play alone up front, quickly supported by a packed midfield, and behind Buchwald and company will be the sweeper Dubacic, the Yugoslav. Well, Howard Wilkinson has surprised us here tonight with his team. David Rowcastle gets his first start in a lead shirt since his £2 million move from Arsenal. Gordon Strachan will now drift more to the left side of the midfield, we understand, and David Batty will play at right-back with a licence to storm forward. Tony DiRigo returns to left-back after missing Sunday's game with a stomach upset. So Batty at right-back in place of John Newsom. Rowcastle ahead of him, Strachan moving more to the left, Lee Chapman, the man the Germans really fear, and Eric Cantona, the spearhead. It's a gamble. I suggested to Howard Wilkinson, everything I do is a gamble, he said. He seemed relaxed and very confident. Ron Atkinson here with me. Well, uh, two million pounds, and at last David Rowcastle can make his appearance in yes. the number two shirt, but playing, of course, on the wide on the right side. Yes, I should think uh, Howard Wilkins has gone to try and get as many experienced players in as he can. Um, playing Batty at right back may seem a bit of a gamble, but of course he's played there for England. And obviously Roe Castle's got European experience with the Arsenal. So I think, he, I think he's trying to do that, uh, Brian. I think he's trying to get as many experienced players in the pot as he can. What do you expect tonight? Do you expect them to go charging forward uh, Leeds United? No, I know that's Trumpet their normal sounding or what? I know that's their normal style, Brian. They try and play that way away from home, try and press the game, play a high pressure game. I would think they'll have to take into consideration uh, it's over two legs. And don't forget the Germans as a nation are very, very good at counter-attacking. And I don't think Howard will be too happy about leaving the back door open and maybe going for an all-out assault and then finding himself uh, one or two down. I certainly think it'll be a more cautious lead, lead, uh, leads approach than is normal in their league games. Who are Cantona, the Frenchman, leads incidentally tonight here in uh, parading for the first time their new away strip of all blue. Well, almost all blue. Looks like the kitchen curtains are out again. But uh, it's a beautiful stadium here and a wonderful night. The stadium, in fact, that was used for the European Championships in 1988, but uh, some 
huge refurbishments going on here and that's why on the far side uh, the crowd is fairly sparse and uh, a lot of the work being done of course for the uh, World Athletics Championships. Yes, I think that will work in Leeds' favour as well, Brian. I think the very fact that it, the, the atmosphere for a big game like this isn't quite as electric as you'd expect. It'd certainly be a lot different at Ellen Road in a fortnight. And I, I could see that working for uh, Leeds, providing they don't get lulled by the atmosphere. Well, we're just about to start. Stuttgart fourth in the German First Division. The sides, of course, have already met. The referee is from uh, Sweden, Rooney Larsson. The sides have already met in the Makita Trophy in a very good pre-season tournament when Leeds won by two goals to one after going behind and really should have won by more on that day. But now it's quite a different story. A Stuttgart in the white shirts attack the goal to our left. Leeds' experience in Europe is pretty thin on the ground. But they know well enough the job that's got to be done here tonight. It's got to be tight and disciplined, as Ron says, especially disciplined. So that the game is still very much within their sights when they come to the second leg at Ellen Road a fortnight tonight. Cantona and uh, Chapman both going for the same ball. Sverison, the Icelandic player. Chase forward now for Schneider. But charged away there by Chris White. The onus really on Stuttgart to make the running, particularly early on here. Schneider again with the cross, and that time Gary Speed getting it away. Buchwald, such a big influence. Through the defence and right through the midfield, and comes forward as well, Buchwald, when he needs to. Dorigo really hustled there, conceding the first corner of the game. Yes, he'll have some work to do, Tony Dorigo, tonight. He's playing against a very, very pacey right side of the Germans attack the lad Buck they nicknamed the number seven Buck they nicknamed him Turbo he's a bit of a flying machine and if there's anybody capable of dealing with him pace for pace obviously Dirigo's the man Howard uh, Wilkinson saying a goalless draw would be a good result tonight 1-1 one, one even better a victory for Leeds would be smashing and there's a long way still to go here's the corner coming in Lee Chapman getting right back there to help that one away for Leeds Schneider again, playing his first full game for Stuttgart tonight, 21 years old. Howard Wilkinson, almost four years ago, he joined Leeds when they were struggling in the second division. My goodness, it's been almost a fairy tale since then for the Leeds fans. Fun they've had. Promotion, a championship, and now almost unbelievably, here's Europe as well. Lee Chapman, the Germans, the papers full of him and the fear that Stuttgart have his ability in the air. Bronzek passed a fitness test just before the game. This is the Yugoslav sweeper, Dubacic, Serbian. Edison for the number five Struntz, bought from Bayern Munich. Strachan tracking him. Gaudino tried to get onto the end of that one, but the ball coming through quite safely, so far as leads are concerned, through to John Lukic. Dubacic with the header. White with one for Leeds. Dorigo. Vancic. Fairclough letting that one go. And David Batty. Still wearing that number four shirt, but operating more or less at right back. Getting it clear. Here's the sweeper again. Kurgel. Bonsek. Gaudino knocking it in, again Fairclough watching it well, and Cantona on the break, Schneider after him, Strachan is busy up alongside him. Roadcastle here on the right. And a good curling cross in there, just a little too high for Lee Chapman. 
Y yes, he looked an excellent cross in that uh, when Rocas was set it off, Brian. And obviously, uh, Howard Wilkinson will be looking for him to get plenty of those in the box for, for Big Chapman and Cantona. Interesting uh, team tactics going on at the moment. They, uh, Gary Speed is playing a very, very sort of defensive role. It looks almost as if he's been given the anchor job in midfield. Possibly to mark either Gardini or sometimes Sverison who's making breaks from midfield. Stuttgart again. Speed into the challenge there. And a foul and a free kick to Leeds United. Dubacic was injured there. I mean, it was a nasty situation there for Stuttgart because as he went down injured, the uh, Leeds are mounting an attack here. And as you, you've seen, I mean, he goes down and he's actually, he was actually playing uh, Chapman well on side. That was, it looked very much as if Leeds were going to capitalise on that. Any, any early thoughts yet, Ron, about uh, yes, we the knew problems the, that Leeds might face? Yeah, I think the biggest problem is going to be runs from midfield. I should think that's why Gary Speed's been sat in there. They probably think uh, and give a little strack and the license to maybe support the, the front players more. Obviously, they, they have a lot of midfield players. They're very, very good at coming in from wide positions to join the midfield. As I said earlier, Buck's very quick, so he's, he's going to be a problem out on that side. But Kurgle seems to hold the left-hand position, and when the ball's played into Fritz Volter up the middle, darts inside very quickly, and if, uh, if they're not in a wide-away club in midfield, all of a sudden, you know, they could have problems leads. Well, Howard Wilkinson on the left, looking relaxed enough. And, uh, Alan Sutton alongside him, the physio. I just wonder how the atmosphere may get to them. I said the, uh, He's taken the a nasty up. gash on the left eye there. The uh, Yugoslav sweeper, Dvevchik. And it'll be a bounce ball. Sorry, Ron. Yeah, just saying, I just wonder how he... Sometimes Leeds may get the impression that it's not a particularly... Uh, he hasn't got the white hot fever to say, the normal European match. I just... I hope that doesn't lull them into the feeling that it's sort of a little bit testimonial. I know that sounds daft in a game of this magnitude, but uh, it's, it does seem an unreal atmosphere for, uh, for two big clubs like this. Gardino, not forward. Balf is after this one. Lukic, safety above him. But he's quick, Fritz Walter. And we saw in that... Akita Trophy, the goal he scored for Stuttgart against Leeds. Not only is he quick, but he's got a very good eye for a ball and uh, very good touch indeed. It's a free kick for Leeds. Gary McAllister. An increasing influence through that midfield alongside Gordon Strack. And the two men who really make things buzz in the midfield there for Leeds. McAllister with the free kick. Stuttgart get it away. So Chris Fairclough up there, I think, who got the touch. Here's Rocastle. Chance for Rocastle, and he whacked it into the side netting. Just for a moment, a chance opened up there for Rocastle, who scored four leads against Stuttgart in that Makita trophy. Well, this would have been a dream start for him, wouldn't it? He holds his body strength there against Kurgel, controls it very well, actually. From there, you would have expected him to have scored or at least hit target. Yeah, he'll, be, he'll be disappointed. He's, he's, he's missed a very good chance. Certainly, he should have been on the target and looked for a deflection or something. But I actually thought Leeds might have had a penalty just before that incident. That's a clever ball forward from Strachan. Just a one-touch ball over the top of the defenders coming out. But I thought there might have been a suggestion of a penalty before that, Brian. I think Fairclough is getting a little bit mauled in the penalty box on the uh, previous free kick. Batty could keep it in play. Throw to Stuttgart. 
I say, lying fourth in the German first division at the moment. So early in the season still. They've played three at home here. They've won them all. But they lost last weekend away to a second division side, Hansa Rostock, in the German Cup. This is Kurgel. Very useful down that left-hand side, Kurgel. Won a couple of caps for Germany back in 1985. Gaudino. Strachan coming very close there to Struntz. Tries to get it wide out there towards Schneider. It'll be a throw to Leeds United. Big prizes certainly at stake in the European Cup this season. Leeds reckon something like three million pounds could be theirs if they... Uh, these first two rounds, they win beat Stuttgart over two rounds and go through the next rounds as well. And then, of course, it becomes a league basis in place of the old quarterfinals and semifinals, as we had last year, the league basis. And then you really dip your fingers in the honeypot and make a lot of money. Ten minutes gone. Nil-nil here for Leeds United against the champions of Germany, Stuttgart. This is Gaudino playing it wide for Kurgel. Tricky little player, but he's got to close him down quickly. Kurgel's getting the better of him. Fronzek playing it in. And Strachan dragging it away to Gary Speed. A nice little touch by Strachan, not matched by the one from Gary Speed, which gave Canton a no chance and gave a throw to Stuttgart. Yes, I wonder whether Stuttgart will try and feed uh, Kurgel a little bit early on. As soon as they realise Batty is playing at right full-back, and give him the opportunity to test Batty. Obviously, a, a good international player, Batty, but not an experienced fullback. Came off McAllister's head, did it? No, it's a throw to Leeds. Ferrison, White, free kick to Leeds, foul on Lee Chapman. Yes, they'll be encouraged if they can build up some pressure on free kicks and corners. This is uh, this is Leeds' scene. They're very, very good at this. This is where they tend to get their head of steam going. Speed, very good in the airs, right in there, of course. So is Fairclough. Schneider, who got it away, up to Walter. The break on now, which is Buck. The cross coming in, the flagger stayed down, and Rocastle's back there. And it might come for Kurgle now. Leeds in a lot of danger here now. Kurgle lining up his man on the far side, Gaudino with the header. Walter can't get there, nodded away, but just for a moment, Rocastle was the only one back. Fronzek crossing it in once more. Dorigo on the far side. And Gaudino wins the throw for Stuttgart. But suddenly Leeds looked in terrible trouble with just uh, Rocastle back there. I guess it was a mix-up all the way around, wasn't it? The two big central defenders had gone forward for the free kick. Quick break against them, a quick counter against them. Batty didn't know whether to stick or bust. Nearly he was trying for playing and tried to play an offside, which was nowhere near offside. And then Rocastle got caught in the last defending position. Uh, but we saw there the menace of Stuttgart, the ability to come from one end of the field to the other very, very quickly and very controlled. It's the one area of worry I think we have for Leeds United. Their form away from home this season has been none too impressive. They've conceded goals all along the line. And uh, lost a little bit of their credibility away from home. Speed, a good challenge by Rocastle. Speed to Fairclough, Rocastle again. Canton up on the far side, Chapman's waiting in there as well. Canton has shot, but it's an easy one this time for Immel. Walter being closely watched by Fairclough. Gardino. And a goal kick. Castle's appearance in the uh, Leeds team presumably 
Carl Wilkinson partly swayed by the fact that he's got international experience and of course he's got European experience with uh, Arsenal in a side that is very short on European experience. Chapman has, has a bad kick by Lukic, got away with it. Lee Chapman had a, a little skirmish in Europe with Arsenal some 10 years ago. Cantona played in Europe when he was with the French side uh, Auxerre. And Gordon Strachan, of course, played in Europe, principally with uh, Aberdeen back in 1983 when they won the Cup Winners' Cup. And here's Chris White on a sortie forward. Chapman, Rowcastle, up to Cantona. A little turn by him, but he found Dubacic was in the way. And the free kick given to Leeds. Six or seven yards outside the strip guard penalty area. McAllister has a tremendous dig on him. And Dorigo also, as Ron Atkinson reminds me. And uh, Batty is there. Strachan is there. Five in the uh, Stuttgart wall. Is it McAllister? Is it Dorigo? get on with the free kick but the Swedish referee said no wait for me to give you the signal <laughs> he moved it six inches but he had his way now what's it going to be it's going to be Dorigo driven straight into the Stuttgart wall ricocheting here for Rocky Rowcastle Rowcastle again well that was a leg that was outstretched that brought Rowcastle down inside the penalty area, Ron Atkinson. Yes, it looked a little bit suspicious, that, didn't it? Um, sitting on the fence a little bit, Brian. I actually, my first reaction was that could well have been a penalty. Well, certainly a free kick. I'm not sure, to be fair, whether it was in the box or outside the box, but it's, uh, it was a very, very dangerous challenge. Gaudino. Knocking forward again, high towards Valta. Speed. There we go, to speed. Chapman, twisting and turning, finding uh, Stratton. Bringing it to this side of the field now to Rowcastle, but running straight into Fronzek. Still nil-nil here in Stuttgart between uh, Stuttgart and Leeds United. A delicate little touch there by Chapman. A good ball played forward by Strachan. Here's Cantona. Hitting it long again towards Chapman, but uh, Buchwald gets it away. Ronzek to Kurgel. Batty is right there with him. I think that's something he can afford to do, Brian. I think uh, Batty can afford to push right tight on Kurgel. I mean, they've only really got one striker up the field. There's two centre-halves, but should be able to deal with that. The only problem you have sometimes is two centre halves against one. One thinks he's marking, and the, the other thinks he's marking. And they tend to leave the guy a little bit spare. I would prefer to see one man go tight with Fritz Walter, and maybe Chris White sit out as a definite sweeper. That Fairclough going one to one with it. Good ball there, played by Fronzek. Excellent play between him and Kurgel, and here's Kurgel now for Stuttgart. Speed. He's gone past speed. He's trying to get a shot in, and it's snaked across that six-yard area. Ellison very nearly got a touch, the number eight. It slithered wide of that far Leeds United post. It was Kurgle's shot. And a goal ball. Some beautiful link-up play there, wasn't it, between Fonsec and Kurgle. And what was a little bit disturbing there, Brian, was the way Batty and uh, Rowcastle reacted to that. They got caught in the middle of a 1-2, and really neither made a definite effort to get back. That's a little bit of a let-up for Leeds. there by White. Schneider. There we go. And the ball's given uh, Leeds United's way. It's a throw. 1,500 Leeds fans here. There were just nine arrests in the town last night. So there's Walker, the uh, Football Association security man, tells me all for minor offences. 800 police on duty here to watch them tonight. Up goes Cantona. Here's Cantona again. Rowcastle. 
Cantona. Borrego oh, with a throw. Here's Strachan. Borrego's cross towards Cantona. Fronzek getting it away. Again, Borrego. Strachan. Icelandic player. There's his cross coming in. Kurgle. Little chip again. Again, Leeds get it away. They were lining up Fairclough and White to get that one away. Shot charge down and uh, Cantona playing it back. And it came off Fonzek, so it'll be a throw presumably to Leeds United. That's where they are dangerous, though, Stuttgart. They are very, very good at breaking from midfield. I mean, the, the run of Sverisons was, was excellent. And quite honestly, sometimes you have the impression the leads back forward do tend to ball watch a little bit, not, not pick up runners. I mean, I, that's, that's why I can only suggest that speed has gone in there to try and add something to them in there. 20 minutes gone. Matty with the free kick. Fronzek with the header for Stuttgart. There's speed. Now Rokos. Nobody there in a blue shirt. Fronzek again. Had a checkered international career, this big number three. Won his place back in the German side during the European Championships in Sweden. Played one game, lost his place. Didn't play in the final and won his place back again in Copenhagen against Denmark last week. Chased by Chapman, and hustled enough, and it came off Balta. Chris White for Leeds. Fouled with a header, Roe Castle. Cantona chasing, but Dubchik. Doesn't look very much as if Leeds are making any concessions to playing in European uh, football, Brian. They're, play, they're trying to play the same way as they do in the ordinary uh, domestic situation, and uh, every free kick, for argument's sake, deep in their own half, has been hit long and forward, and uh, there is sometimes a suggestion at this level that if you give the ball away too cheaply, um, you, you're going to spend a lot of time chasing it. I just wonder whether... With the Leeds is inexperienced in that respect, uh, maybe shown up a little bit tonight. But they've had a, they've had a useful start, but there is always a threat. Like watching the Walter fellow, you know, it's not hard to see why he scores goals. He's busy, he's bright. Even when the ball's a long way away from him, you can see him always trying to steal a position on people. It's Batty. Back to Rowcastle. Batty again, planting it forward. Nice little touch there by Speed. Played well by McAllister. Dubacic. Forward towards Walter. Gaudino's in there. Fairclough got his foot on the accelerator, just got in there quickly enough as Lukic came out. But that would be alarmist, wouldn't it? I mean, there's no way in the world Walter should have had this space before he gets the touch on. Uh, there's two central defenders there in close proximity, and yet neither have picked them up. He only needed that to break right from Gaudino, and there'd have been an excellent chance for him. Speed to Cantona. And a lead throw. Gary Speed with it. No, he's going to leave it for David Batty. Chapman came towards the near post. And there was a bit of pushing and shoving. Interesting what you were saying earlier about uh, the lack of atmosphere, really, in terms it doesn't feel like a big European occasion with the empty spaces on the far side. And I thought we might well find an intimidating atmosphere here. They normally get crowds for these sort of games of something in the region of 60,000. Their average home gate this season is something like 31,000. Of course, with the running track around the ground, the players are a long way from the atmosphere. 
Touchdown that time by Fairclough. It'll be a different kettle of fish in a fortnight's time at Ellen Road, you can be sure of that. Oh, little dummy there by Rocast and allowed some space here for McAllister. And body check there by Ubacic. If I imagine the nation or not, but I heard a real smack there as he went in a yellow card for the uh, number four of Stuttgart. And I get a feeling that St. McAllister could be quite badly hurt there. And I noticed the physio was on very quickly indeed. He's in really a lot of trouble there, Gary McAllister. And uh, the last person they want to lose in the side on a night like this would be McAllister, who's having a terrific season. Very, very influential through that midfield, not only for Leeds, but also for Scotland. Had an excellent European Championship. Well, that one certainly looked nasty, didn't it? Appeared to catch him with his shoulder just under just under the jaw somewhere. We were talking about this uh, Fritz Walter fellow. There's uh, Steve Hodge. One of the five substitutes. Two, of course, can be called on. We are talking about Fritz Walter, the number nine of Stuttgart. What a prolific scorer. He has been something like 140 games in the uh, German First Division. That's Harold Wilkinson. We were just saying, I wonder whether there's anybody in, uh, <laughs> in the English football who could, could be uh, compared to him. And I suppose, really, the number nine, Lee Chapman, prolific scorer right through his career, wherever he's played, and he's never won a cap. Well, they're working on McAllister, the doctor there as well. And good news for Leeds. He carries on. Batty with the free kick. Chapman on the far side. Cantona jogging in just inside the Stuttgart penalty area. It's aimed towards Gary Speed. Didn't get real touch on it. Chris Fairclough's up there, faced by Fronzek. Torrigo playing it in quickly towards Lee Chapman. It'll almost come through for Cantona. Back header by Fairclough. Schneider getting it clear. Who filed after it? Dubacic. These fans making their voices heard now in this stadium. Cantona going in, and the little chip there! Tipped over beautifully by Immel. Great thinking there by Eric Cantona. You saw the two sides of him there, didn't you? The power when he won the tackle after Fairclough had pressed for it, and then the, the vision and the delicate chip, and a great touch over from Immel, but uh, full marks to Cantona. I had a feeling he might be the key man tonight, you know, the ability to hold the ball up. I was very impressed with him when he played against us on Sunday. Um, but he... Knocked in again by Cantona, kicked off the line that time. I, I fancy Fritz Walter. So you feel he might be the scourge of Leeds at one end, but he was the saviour of Stuttgart at the other as Cantona got another header in. McAllister knocking it forward again. Dubacic getting up there, Fairclough right up there. And suddenly Leeds will need to defend. Sverison coming forward with a lot of pace about him. Valta one side of him. And Leeds just holding him off. I think it may have come off Strachan that little clearance and finds Gary Speed. In for Strachan. Cantona. McAllister. Strachan. Played wide for McAllister. Nice little touch again by Cantona towards Strachan. Stopped by Buchwald. On for Kurgel. Kurgel in time stops by Batty, who concedes the free kick. Space here now for Fronzek. Could be trouble here for Leeds. Walter is very active inside the box there. Fronzek going on, didn't know what he was doing. And there were so many options for him because uh, Walter had pulled towards him. Gaudino had pulled far on the far side for him. And I've got a 
feeling there's some signaling from the Leeds United bench whether they're suggesting that McAllister can't go on. I think McAllister's struggling possibly with his breathing at the moment. Yeah, Hodge is getting stripped now. And uh, Hodge is virtually coming. He's virtually Steve ready to Hodge go straight on. on. That's a blow for them, but if anything, they're replacing him with a very, very good player. McAllister again. Strachan to Cantona. Here's speed. And a goal kick. I think he had a little bit more time than he thought then. He might even have had time to switch that back to his favourite uh, left foot. Either that or go at the last defender. They're urging that on the bench for McAllister to take deep breaths and try and get himself going again. There's McAllister going into the challenge there, wins it well, finds Lee Chapman, speed now getting it towards Strachan. Lee's beginning to blossom here at this stage. A little touch and a good touch there by uh, Dorigo. Strachan trying to transfer it down that line further for Dorigo, but it's a throw to Leeds United. Good spell for Leeds, this. Yes, I mean, they've set off as if they're playing in a home game. Uh, no fears about the game, no inhibition. In fact, at times, I just wonder whether they're... They're overcommitted, like the times that Fairclough and that have stayed up the field when maybe they're going to leave, leave themselves a little bit vulnerable, but good signs. Uh, the thing that worries me a little bit, Brian, is I just wonder when on the right-hand side of the Leeds team, like Batty, Batty to me doesn't look natural yet. I must admit, I, I, you know, I know he's a very good midfield player, but he doesn't look quite natural at the back there. And every time they put some play together, they cause problems. Long throw by speed. Batty trying to get in and gets in first there, beating Kurgel for that one. Looks natural there. <laughs> it does indeed. <laughs> when he can see only That's the ball natural and go There yeah. yeah. you go. Little chip forward again. Here's Strachan. Good play there by Strachan, but... Canny old Buchwald was there right alongside him. Yes, they've obviously given Strachan free reign to go where he likes and cause as much trouble just playing short of the strikers sometimes, then drifting out to that left-hand position. So another long throw by Speed. Chapman, Fairclough in there, Roe Castle in there. Not the way by Sverison. Leeds thinking up well at the moment, playing a good passing game. But you always remember that German champion sides are renowned always for their technique and their composure. They do keep going. And they're always capable of taking the game by the throat in the very last moments when you least expect it. Cantona, fantastic competitors always. But here's Strachan. Good save again by Immel. That's two excellent saves he's had to make. The first one from Cantona and this one from little Gordon Strachan. Yes, that was a good effort. I thought, I thought when the little man scribbles here, I thought he'd done, just done enough because the, the top's a bit greasy as well. Having said that, they've got a corner and they've looked particularly dangerous on corners. Chris White up at the near post alongside Chapman. White tried the little flick on, it didn't quite work because the uh, sweeper, Dubacic, was there and got it clear. Strachan again for Dorigo. Leeds really turning it on at the moment. McAllister. Batty. Speed on the far side, knocking it in towards Fairclough, and it's just fell a fraction behind him. And now we might well require Fairclough at the other end, because uh, Stuttgart breaking away again. Gaudino and uh, Dorigo trying to hold off. Well, it was always likely to be a problem once Ferrison was down that right touch line. Across along the six-yard area, and never really too much of a bother really uh, it's never close enough to the goal to be too much of a worry for Leeds United I noticed okay. the little fellow was in there again though Volta wasn't he just a yard short at the, at the uh, near post Volta it's another example in these sort of games and European games where, I don't know about you, Ron, I like to see defenders defending. I don't want to see Chris Fairclough at that end of the field too often. I'd rather see him tightening things up at the back No, I think, if it, I think if it's a single leg match, you know, if it's one, over one leg like a, uh, an actual cup tie, Chris is a bit lucky there. 
That's not a clever. Uh, mm. That's not a clever tackle. Um, but you know, they. I hope they've got it in mind, which I'm sure they have. They, these lot are coming back to Ellen Road where they haven't lost a game for an awful long time and not playing well here though. And the corner came off for Leeds United player, did it? No, a free kick's been given against Stuttgart. But from the moment Chris White misheaded that ball and it went up in the air, Leeds were in a lot of trouble. There's a header from uh, Fairclough. And and maybe a touch lucky with that offside yeah. decision. Maybe a bit touch lucky there at Leeds. Chapman coming a long way for that one, didn't make a contact, Roadcastle did, and uh, Fonsek certainly made a contact with him. Free kick to Leeds. Fascinating game this, Leeds, you feel, playing with a lot of dash and a lot of skill, but occasionally a little bit dangerously. Stuttgart well able to punish them on the break, but nil-nil here. McAllister with the shots. He just clipped off the defender, so it'll be another corner for Leeds. In actual fact, this looks like Leeds are the home side, doesn't it? It looks as if Leeds have made up their mind to play as they're winning a home game. And Stuttgart are just prepared. Well, they're not prepared. They're having to defend and then try and play on the counter. That one floated in by Strachan. Touched on by Lee Chapman. A goal kick for Stuttgart. Chapman obviously felt that he was pushed in the back as that corner came in. I think every free kick and every corner that's loaded in there, there's been some mauling going in with Chapman. I mean, I thought early on he may have had a penalty, and it certainly seemed to have happened. There we go. Challenge on uh, Strachan that time. I think it was, who uh, committed the foul. And the little man clearly in a lot of pain, 35 years old. Yeah, it'd be unfortunate there if he... It'd be unfortunate there if they have put him, because I thought at the time that little Gordon was trying to just skip the tackle. I thought he completely evaded it. So that E5... Lead subs warming up, Carl Schutt, Steve Hodge, Scott Sellers, David Weatherall, and the reserve goalkeeper, Mervyn Day. Free kick to Leeds. Chapman flicking it on, Cantona there as well, tries an overhead, falls straight and obligingly into the arms of Ike Immel, the Stuttgart goalkeeper. Alice to get ahead, touched on by Rocastle, Cantona again. Rocastle again getting in there. Holded off the ball though by Fronzek, but no whistle. Schneider playing it dangerously. Buchwald. Leeds getting possession again. Strachan, but just for a moment, Dorigo was back on his heels. It's a goal kick to Stuttgart. There's something like seven minutes to go to the interval. Stuttgart nil, Leeds United nil. First leg of this European Cup tie. And Leeds will feel if it, if it stays like this at half time that they, they probably should have been in front. They've had three decent efforts. Sprint's locking it forward again. Falter there, closed in quickly that time by uh, Chris Fairclough. Here's speed. Cantona couldn't keep it in play. Cup 17 years ago, 1975, when they were in the final in Paris and lost to another German side, Bayern Munich. Good times are coming back to Ellen Road, and so far, they're so good here in southern Germany tonight. Nil nil.
Here's Frontek. Kurgle with the free kick. Dubacic. Easy for Lukic. Here's speed. Beaten by Godino. Free kick. Well, he wanted to take it quickly, the ball was moving, it was a good five or six yards on from where the offence occurred. The Swedish referee, to the relief of Leeds United, hauled them back, and now Leeds have got everybody back behind the ball. Ruby Schneider, getting the ball to Buck on the far side. Struntz, Buck will not keep it in. And a goal kick for Leeds. I think they've illustrated there, Brian, just how slippy they... It's getting very, very greasy on, on the pitch now. Whether there's a dew coming down or what. It's perfect conditions when they kicked off. And then once or twice now you're seeing players losing their footing a little bit when for no apparent reason. by Gaudino. The feet were high there, but to my mind that was six of one half done the other. Chris White for Leeds and uh, Thomas Struntz for Stuttgart. But the referee's given the free kick to Stuttgart, who won the uh, German Championship in the most dramatic fashion with a goal just four minutes from the end of their last game. What a bad free kick. Cantona. Held on it for too long, and Valter came back and dispossessed him. Gaudino playing it in. Look who's right back there holding out that time. Lee Chapman. Batty, acrobatically. Kurgle. And Batty playing the ball straight into Stuttgart's path. Gaudino with a shot. time important for Leeds to defend with some efficiency here Lee Chapman right back there in his own penalty area watching Buchwald Bonzek but it might just go out yes it does for a throw to Leeds unhappy with that decision I don't think they'll be terribly happy about the way their teams played either they've shown little flashes there's been one or two touches and obviously they've got good quality but they're certainly they're not the best German team I've ever seen by a long stroke and quite honestly um, Leeds really ought to be in the lead and a free kick for Leeds now for a handball there again six or seven yards outside the penalty area Dorigo no doubt will line up for this one again Alongside McAllister. Batty and Strachan there again. And we had one earlier in the game which Dorigo smashed straight into the Stuttgart wall. Here's Dorigo again. He's gone through the wall, but it's not nearly enough power to embarrass Immel. Last minute of the first half now. Speed, couldn't get a touch on that one. Svedesen. 
Buck. Dalton waiting in the middle. Strachan trying to hold him up. And Speed getting in. And indeed, the German crowd beginning to sound just as Ron Atkinson was saying, just a little disgruntled with the form of their side at the moment. Dubacic now, the sweeper. That's one of those great runs forward that sweepers should make. Batty now. In the end, the ball was bouncing awkwardly for him. And there was no way back to Lukic. He had to concede the corner as we come to the last half minute now of the first half. Bronzek's in there. Sverison's in there. Fritz Walters in the six-yard area. Kurgel then with the corner for Stuttgart. Right on half-time. A deeper one this time. A lot of big men going in there. And in the end, it's the number five, Struntz, who plays it well over the leads. Crossbar. Rokesel's put him under very heavy pressure there, so he couldn't get a clear strike at goal. Just a little concern there. Two corners they've just had, and they've got the headers. Fonsek had a, had a decent chance with the previous corner, and they managed to keep that one back in play, which is something people have said about Leeds this year. They, they're not defending crosses as well as they've done over the last two or three years. Play time added on for injuries. Well, there was a stoppage while McAllister got some treatment. A couple of other small stoppages since then. The back heel by Cantona for speed. Trying to find McAllister on the far side. He in turn looking for Lee Chapman, but it came off McAllister. It's a goal kick. Still nil-nil. That's a good position for a midfield player to take, though, isn't it? Particularly one that anchors most of his game is playing in central areas, but still has the ability to ghost into goal-scoring positions. McAllister. Strachan as busy as a bee still. <laughs> Look at him battling away there against Dubacic, who must stand a good nine or ten inches taller than uh, little Strachan. Kurgel. Gaudino. Deflected off McAllister, another corner. Now let's see how Leeds deal with this. With close on two minutes of injury time played at the end of the first half. Fairclough, there's work for him to do. There'll be work for White to do. Chapman's come back to help out. Cantona's back there. In fact, Leeds have got 11 men back in their own penalty area now. Here comes the corner, driven in this time. And it was Chris White who got up and got it away. Back as far as Schneider. Knocked in again. This should be easy for Lukic. Well, it should be. And it's a throw for Leeds. Leeds playing with a lot of composure, mixed with a lot of dash. Occasionally looking just that little bit vulnerable to the break. And I would have thought if they can stay this way for a few more seconds, Howard Wilkinson will be more than pleased with their first half performance. Need to stay rigid, and determined, and disciplined in this second half. Sverison getting past McAllister, knocking the ball in, but White there, a formidable barrier once again for Leeds United. Dubacic, knocking it wide into Sverison. Leeds are getting everybody back in these last seconds of the first half. The little touch speeds right back there, the ball gathering a little bit of uh, pace there and goes behind for the goal kick. Yes, I mean, we've got to almost half-time, and this is their first real sustained spell of any sort of pressure. Now played three minutes of injury time. White ducking in and knocking it forward towards Chapman. Stuttgart again, they've suddenly got three up, they've got four up, and Leeds are looking very stretched, but Fairclough again is there. Didn't want to risk a back pass there. Plays it wide, Strachan, as always, you would expect, is available, as he is in game here, but he's given the ball away to Struntz this time. Coming to near four minutes of time added on now. Here goes the half-time whistle, 
And quite clearly the message from Stuttgart to English football followers at the moment is so far so good. With a scoreline here in the European Cup first leg game between Stuttgart and Leeds United at 0-0. Now before... Welcome back. Well, our other big European game tonight, of course, is at Old Trafford, where Manchester United are playing to beat Moscow in the first round of the UEFA Cup. Here's a scene setter from our commentator, Alan Parry. Well, a little bit of history is made here tonight. This is Manchester United's 100th tie in Europe, and in fact, it's the first time they've ever faced Russian opposition. It's also just about the most complicated bit of team selection United manager Alex Ferguson has ever faced. Because of the complications of injury, illness, suspension and the new UEFA rules concerning non-English players, Ferguson is without no fewer than nine first-team regulars. But United should still be too strong for a once famous Russian club now in decline. The message for United tonight is to go for goals. And of course, we'll be joining uh, that match for the second half live. Well, back to Stuttgart, John. A good first half, I thought, by Leeds. I think Leeds would be uh, very happy with that. Howard Wilkinson should be. I think, uh, if anything, they deserve to be in front. And I think if they keep the right attitude in the second half, they could well win the match. I think they should try to win it. Really. Well, Roe Castle had a, a bit of a chance very early in the game, John. Yeah, uh, Strachan, beautiful ball from Strachan, who's been outstanding. And in the end, he, he had a clear shot at the goals from only about six yards, and I think he should have scored there. Really has to hit the target with that one. But just after that, we thought perhaps there should have been a penalty, and Ron Atkinson did, who's at the match here as a co-commentator. He thought there was a little bit of a foul there, and uh, I think we've seen penalties given for less than that. Yeah, maybe at least he might have got it. But looking at it there in the replay, it looked like the German player got a touch of the ball before Rock Castle actually went yeah. over his leg, so it probably was the right decision. Big Ron's getting a bit overexcited yes. there. Yeah. He didn't have the replay on it. <laughs> but in, in general play, Leeds have had the bulk of it, yes. haven't they? I think the way the game has gone, there's been very little um, midfield play. The ball's either at one end of the pitch or the other, and I think nobody in the middle of the field. Strachan's been very good, uh, he's been the outstanding midfield player, but I think McAllister should do a lot more in the middle of the field mm -hmm. to get the flow of the game going towards the German goal, because it's either attack or defend for Leeds, and there's very little uh, play. Despite all their, their, their play, Leeds, they still look a little bit vulnerable at the back, uh -huh. and it could be goals in this game by the end of it. Well, Cantona, as usual, had one or two wonderful little touches, John. He had one overhead kick and he had a little chip here, which I thought was a little gem. But at, at, during the game, you said you thought he tried it too early there. Well, I think he was... Uh, he might have taken a little bit forward, but if you're going to try a chip, you've got to try it early. But I think the goalkeeper had it well covered, and I do think the goalkeeper made a little bit of a meal of it there. OK, well, we've got plenty to look forward to in the second half. We'll take a quick break now, but join us for live action in the second half in Stuttgart. Well, John, before the break, you were saying that Gordon Strachan was the brightest star, if you like, tonight for Leeds United. And we've got a little clip here where the little fella who doesn't score too many goals these days, but had a terrific effort. Yeah, it was a good shot from the edge of the box, good build-up from Leeds again. And the goalkeeper, yeah, making a good save, a save you would expect him to make. Yeah. But Strachan has, has been very good. Anything that's happened for Leeds, uh, he's been at the heart of it. Yeah, but you're not quite happy about the, the, the way that the Leeds midfielders are settling into it. Well, I think McAllister could, could be more influential. I think he's getting ahead of the ball far too much, and I think the game's either at one end of the, the field or the other. And I think as, whoever gets a grip in the midfield will keep the flow going uh, mm -hmm. their way. And I think McAllister's getting ahead of the ball at times, making runs that I think as a midfield player should be holding his ground uh -huh. and make sure that the flow of the game goes their way. Well, there's McAllister there. The uh, Leeds United team are out. So let's go over there to Stuttgart and join uh, Ron Atkinson. But first, Brian Moore. Thank you, Saint. First thing I notice is that Steve Hodge just uh, noticed is on the pitch for Leeds United wearing the number 14 shirt. Let's just work out. It's David Rocastle who's gone off. Gordon Strachan has reverted to right side midfield. That's really the only change. And uh, Stevie Hodge now taking the role that uh, Strachan had, sort of the left side of midfield. There's Strachan on that far side now. Rocastle off then. Well, Steve Hodge scored against you, uh, Aston Villa, on Sunday. He's a terrific little player down the left-hand side of midfield. Yes, I think he's particularly, he's at his best when he plays in, shall we say, the narrow, narrow midfield role. He doesn't particularly like being the last man in midfield on the left-hand side. Um, I think he's a great player for the side when, when they're chasing a game 
and he can play like he did on Sunday and gamble, you know, just make a few gambler's runs from midfield. Good fouled. Stunts. To back. Schneider. Good fouled again. Great run from the back and taken down by Lee Chapman. A free kick. Buchwald stays down and is in a lot of pain clutching that left ankle. Chapman going after him, stretching for the ball there. Just catches the left ankle, maybe. Certainly Buchwald in a lot of pain. I must say, I'm always skeptical with him. I mean, he's a big, strong guy, but going back to Italia 90, Brian, the number of times he. He was almost as bad as Klinsman in that uh, tournament for the no time to hit the deck. So you do tend to be a little bit sceptical whenever he's having treatment. What about Leeds and what they have to do now, in your view, now in this, uh, in this second half run? I think they've got to try and play the way they were playing first half. They're taking the game to the opposition. As you said, as, or as we were saying, just be a little bit more cautious at the back. What tended to happen just before half-time, where well, the Germans got some sort of ascendancy and were allowed to pass the ball around, and it looks very much as if they may start that way this half, the, uh, the Germans. They look as if they're, they're going to come out and make a little bit of a fist of it. Good pictures there as McAllister lines up this wall in front of John Lukic. Buchwald is all right, stamping that left foot on the ground. It's Fronzek up towards Buchwald, just nicks it away from Strachan towards Kurgel. Kurgel now. Getting that left foot to work once again, just as speed did there for Leeds United and getting it away. Canton are the only man up, chasing across here. Strum finding uh, Buck. So here, Stuttgart again, knocked away again by Gary Speed for Cantona. Dorigo chipping it forward. Nice little touch there by Chapman. Speed seeking out uh, Strachan on the far side. Strachan having trouble with Kurgel, gets it back to Fronzek. Kurgel again. Made wide again for Buck. Taking on Dorigo. Slipping it inside again. Stumps again. On to the right foot. And pushed away well. Can Speed get in there? And in the end, White. That's a real emergency there for Leeds United. With a good challenging run by Struntz and a good shot that Lukic could only push away. But here's Strachan now. Losing out that time, though, to Dubacic. And an offside flag surely up against Gaudino. And a free kick to Leeds United. But a real troublesome moment there for Leeds, Ron. Yes, I would say that's been their, their most nervous moment of the night. Struntz hits a very good shot there. He'd opened himself up very well. There we... Lukic gets the, uh, the, the parry. And fortunately, he doesn't rebound to Volta. But it looks all on for Gardini until the speed makes a great recovery tackle. So certainly the nearest uh, Stuttgart have come to scoring. Good jump by Fairclough there, beating Gaudino in the air. Offside, surely, yes, against Valta by two or three yards. I'm trying to think the normal, the normal team or away team in Europe would be one that said, now we'll sit behind the ball, we'll, you know, we'll block the game up, no score at half-time. That's, that's as a result that it uh, could well go to the end. But I've, I can't recall, just trying to think there, Brian, whenever I've seen Leeds go away and block up for a no score draw. That's gone well by Cantona. Chapman getting in there as well. Cantona in there too. Schneider working the ball away for Stuttgart. And here's Kurgel. This could be trouble. Walter's up ahead of him. Gaudino's coming in fast. The ball played into the path of Walter. And it just was a yard or so too far ahead of him. Gaudino now. And the shot was just wide of the goal by Struntz. And the goal kick to Leeds United. At a moment of alarm there again for the visitors. Final shot. Might make a connection to Fairclough, and it's spinning away there, as you can see, with an excellent slow motion, just as wide of the post. As you think when Strunz hit that, he probably thought he'd scored, didn't he? Because it looked to be all the way inside the post until the very last moment. But in the last in the last couple of minutes, we've had three great situations either end. I mean, Hodge was only a yard off when he gambled on Cantona's head flick header. Up towards Chapman. And now speed. Cantona, a little touchdown. McAllister tries to find Hodge. 
It'll come to uh, Dorigo Strachan. Oh, he had to jump over that challenge there from Buck. And quite rightly, the Swedish referee gives a free kick to Leeds United. United nearly, if you just joined us. McAllister for Leeds in the blue. Touched on by speed. After Fairclough had won a very good header on the far side. Guided it nicely into the path of Gary Speed. Speed couldn't quite get enough purchase on it, really, to test Immel. Jericho yeah. being hustled by Volta. Yeah, it's a pity he's in there standing, isn't it? It's a pity there wasn't a little bit more on uh, Fairclough's header. So he could come and get some real impact on it. Yeah, Actually, that's one of the things about Leeds. We talk about their big guys in the box. That particular one, Chapman and Cantona, and the two central defenders. But one of the best headers they've got is actually Gary Speed. He's particularly dangerous when he comes up for free kicks. Here's Buck. And inside Dorigo that time. Playing the handball against uh, Steve Hodge there. White working the ball away again for Leeds. Dubacic returning it for Stuttgart. Chris White again. Little touch by Chapman. Not quite what he wanted, but still forces the ball through, but unfairly with a foul against Struntz. Free kick to Stuttgart. White. Here we go to White. Lukic has gone wide of his goal in case there's the back pass. Gets it straight up towards Lee Chapman. No foul there as Hodge is felled. And an offside surely against Buck. Big kick again to Leeds. The back four pushing up very quickly with great discipline. Very dangerous though to be fair there, Brian. I mean, actually, they had no awareness, really, where Gardini or um, Walter was. Unfortunately for them, Buck had ran himself offside, because the two players completely unmarked in the centre of the attack that uh, weren't offside. Speed, playing it quickly to Cantona. Speed to Dorigo. Played down the line now to Hodge. Onto that left foot again. Chapman's on the far side, but it won't reach him. Strunk's getting it away. Speed again for Leeds. A little touch for Strack and a back heel by him towards Chapman. It didn't go for him though. And suddenly, out of that Leeds attack, here is Stuttgart breaking forward with uh, Fritz Walter. To Buck, Walter in the middle. Nogal on the far side. Gaudino waiting in there. Leeds backpedaling here furiously. Gaudino onto the left foot. Charged down again by Chris White and falling for McAllister. Cantona came off the Stuttgart player. Throw to Leeds. I think while the game's going like this with uh, Stuttgart doing most of the pressing, there's a big responsibility on Eric Cantona now. I mean, he's, far, he's a far better technical player than uh, Lee Chapman, and because they're being boxed in a little bit, Leeds really needs somebody to get hold of the ball up front and just keep them possession and buy them a bit of time so the midfield players and the defenders can have a breather and get up to them a little bit. Long towards Chapman. And it'll come for Hodge. Canton has pulled away from his man. And he finds Canton on the far side. But it's Chapman who got the header in. Good break then for Leeds United. And uh, Hodge always offering something down that left flank. It seems either, either time any side puts a decent attack together now, they nearly get a, an end product from it. I mean, Chapman really, I bet he thinks he, he might have got more on that one. As you said, super ball in from Steve Hodge. Batty first to show there, gets the ball up to Chapman. Oh, a bad ball by Chapman. A bad ball by Chapman, giving it to Kurgel. And Stuttgart could make lead suffer here. Fronzek gets a shot in, not a very good one. Strumpfall. And Strunz with a shot. This was a poor one into the side netting. Referee oh. rushing across to Strunz for some reason, but it was uh, a bad miss by him. Well, he's had three shots since the, since the interval. Two of them were very good ones from far more difficult uh, positions and under far more pressure than that. I thought actually he could have run that at the keeper. I mean, we were saying about Rowcastle's in the first half. 
Um, that was probably a better chance because he got more time and more chance to control it. But it's amazing the number of times now both sides are cutting through the other. Stuttgart nil, Leeds United nil, with just over 10 minutes of the second half gone. Fronzek with the free kick for Stuttgart. Chris White up well, he's missed scarcely anything in the uh, in the air tonight. It's been really formidable, good work here by uh, Speed. White getting it away again, only Cantona up now for Leeds. Svedison. Batty, yeah. and an offside flag is up against Kurgle on the far side. He'll have to come back, I don't think the referee spotted it yet. It's against the post, but the flag is up there, and in fairness to the... You can see it in the bottom of the picture there for a moment. And in fairness to the Swedish linesman, he has stayed firm, and I'm not even sure now that the referee has seen him. And he's still got his flag up, and the referee still hasn't seen him. A total lack of coordination between referee and linesman there. But it was an excellent decision because Kerber was a shade offside. Just a fraction. Lukic then with the free kick for Leeds. Up goes Cantona. Chapman's up there too. Buchwald gets it away. Up to Kerbel, who you still feel could be the danger man, offering so much down that left flank. Fronzik's there as well. Work by Fairclough. Strachan, a little touch in for Cantona. Beaten by Buchwald's challenge. Comes up to Chapman. Strachan playing it down the line. Canton is after this one. And Dubacic stabbing it into touch. For a throw to Leeds United. Fairclough joining the charge very quickly, making his late run. Needs to get back now as White holds up Valta. Just looking there, Brian, I wonder whether Howard uh, Wilkinson's at all trying with the idea of going into a five-man midfield. He's got Scott Sellers there, who's a natural left-sided player. Whether he would toy with the idea of bringing him on outside of uh, Hodge and taking one of his front players off and just giving Hodge a free running roll from midfield with uh, plenty to say for himself there alongside uh, Howard Wilkinson. Yes, it's certainly an option that's open to uh, Howard Wilkinson. I think what that will enable, would enable Leeds to do is to block off the flanks a little bit more, which is where Stuttgart are now starting to build up their play. They're going, their best movements seem to be when they go wide on both sides. Dubacic with the free kick. The chip by him towards Gaudino. Good challenge, though, by Fairclough. Kurgel. He's got a lot going for him, Kurgle. Getting away from Strachan. This is very dangerous now. Still with Kurgle shimmying away there. And in the end, Dorigo just hacks whether he made a contact or not. But at least the ball came away for Leeds United and down for a throw. So uh, Kurgle weaving a little bit of magic on that far side. And Leeds looked in big distress there. That came off for Struntz. I tell you what, there's every chance then that Batty might have upended him. I just wonder whether, looking at Batty, you know, I wonder whether he's had injury problems this season. I wonder whether he's totally fit. Because every time somebody runs past him, he doesn't make any apparent drive to get back in the game again, which a natural defender would do so. It might just be also that Howard Wilkinson has told him in no uncertain terms that he wants no yellow cards and least of all red cards from any uh, rash tackles from David Batty here tonight. getting it back, Dubacic knocking it forward up towards Valter, but again well beaten in the air by Fairclough Oh, Immel colliding there with Chapman and uh, a foul on the goalkeeper says the Swedish referee and a free kick 
One yellow card tonight going to Dubacek for a body check on McAllister. Got a real clash between uh, goalkeeper and centre forward there. To be fair, Immo was actually looking for Big Lee Chapman there. And he played the ball before uh, Chapman made contact with it. Reed's getting back. Here's Gaudino. Alta waiting in the middle. Fairclaw up to McAllister. Little touch by him to Cantona. Getting themselves into trouble again. I'd be happy seeing them not play such dainty stuff so close to their own penalty area. Play it simple and play it safe now. They've done so well so far, Leeds United. With just over an hour gone and still nil-nil. I think the big problem they have at the moment, though, is they've got no out ball. They've been boxed in. I mean, if you look at uh, Bookfall now, he's starting, to, he's starting to drive forward. And actually, Chapman's going with him as a marker. So consequently, when Leeds win the ball back, they have little options to go for. This is Buck, but speed is right back there. Penn right back there on these occasions, Leeds. Struntz knocking it now for Dubacic. Cantona looks as if he may have done a hamstring. Dubacic still going forwards. Batty will get it away. As Cantona looks to be struggling on this side of the field. His arm is up, as you can see, at the bottom of the picture now. He wants to come off. Yes, and he's clutching the back of his leg. It's a hamstring. And the real problem there might be not only tonight, but it might well mean that Eric Cantona misses the second leg as well. Yes, the physio can really get the work on him. In the meantime, it's Kurgle. Good break again. Walter, a great chance for Stuttgart here. A little chip. It's in the back of the net. And leads are behind Fritz Walter. Ron Atkinson. To be fair to Stuttgart, they've been threatening that for the last 10 minutes or so. They've got their passing game going. Dorigo, but been, just look at the well space the there. Yeah. That may be something to do with the fact that Cantona was on this side of the field injured, you know. And the ball was actually played up to him when he... Uh... It's Carl Schutt coming on now. Carl Schutt coming on, as we see again, Fritz Walter. Yeah. It's a good finish, that, though, to be fair. It's a terrific finish, isn't it? To be it? fair to him, that's a, that's a classic finish. I'd say it's a super slow motion, too. Yeah. Not classic. that we want to see too much of it, but... Classic uh, finish, but... Uh, You'd have to ask yourself there where, where the, where the uh, Leeds defences have been pulled all, all over the show. Great bit of skill. And a bad moment for Leeds, Fritz Walter then. This prolific goal scorer that we told you about right at the top of the programme has struck again, just as he did at Ellen Road, of course, in the Makita Trophy. On that occasion, Leeds came back from a goal down to win 2-1. Let's hope they can do something like that tonight now. And above all else, Leeds must not concede another one. So Carl Schutz. And to play. I wonder what sort of role. Maybe he's a, a striker. He's up alongside Chapman, of course, in place of Cantona. Yeah, he has got the ability to run wide as well. He's an, he's an excellent crossover ball when he runs wide. But I, I just thought Howard might have put on uh, Sellers. Gone for a really balanced five-man midfield and said, "Hey, let's come on, let's let's deny them the ball a little bit." And okay, if we, if we have to give it beat one nothing, we'll get beat one nothing. Now this is where Leeds really do need to be at their best. As Buchwald comes striding forward again, looks for Galvino, brought down by Chris White. But the referee said quite calmly, White played the ball. He's ignoring all the whistles and boos. Gaudino's gone down and needs some treatment, but the referee was quite adamant that there was no foul there, and there's pointless Fronzek running 30 or 40 yards to have a word with the referee, which he's doing at the moment, of being pushed away by Chris Fairclough. There's Christoph Baum, the uh, coach of Stuttgart. He also, as well, to be fair to the referee, was in the best position of everybody. He was about 10 yards away from that incident. And all of a sudden, we see the miracle cures worked again, and the guy's up and running. Well, limping quick, anyway. But now it becomes a real test for Leeds, Long. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, that will give the... That, they were threatening that Stuttgart, as I say, in all fairness. They picked up their game a little bit. Book Volder started breaking through from the back, which is something... Um, 
he did he did very well in one or two of the games in Sweden and uh, that's 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 caused them extra problems in midfield first half he just sit he just prepared to sit and mark uh, Chapman but this half he's joined in very much from the back Peter Furness there general manager of uh, Stuttgart he doesn't look too happy about something there does he maybe the uh, foul on uh, Gaudino Free kick to lead, David Batty with it. Great incentive for Leeds now to get on level terms, and a away goal would be absolutely priceless. A 1 1 score line would be so much better than 0 0. But at this stage, with a little under 25 minutes left, they're a goal behind. Yes, Chris White. I think if I was Howard Wilkinson, now I'd settle for 1 0. I mean, you. You would have Stratton. to you'd have to fancy Leeds back in Ellen Road, which is totally different to their somewhat of a cauldron for them. And what they daren't do, I don't think, is go another one down. But here come uh, Stuttgart again. Buck. Struntz. Schneider. Sverison. They funneled everybody back. Only a Chapman now is ahead of the ball for Leeds. Strachan in there. Supported by Batty, Bonzek doing well, Kurgle with the cross again, and Leeds were in a bit of trouble once more. I think Walter's taken a knock on the knee as that one came over, Speed trying to hold up Struntz, a lovely ball there played to Gaudino, and good work again by Chris White holding up the Stuttgart attacker. Another the corner to the home side. Some brilliant football there though from Stuttgart. Out on the left wing at first. So one Fonsek, the little one-two there, and then that 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 ball from Strunz, that was magnificent. Man. We were disappointed with them. Uh, we were talking at half time, but they've really picked up the game now in the second half. Gaudino then with the corner. Get it away. Oh, great save by Lukic! Well, they scored again, and it's that man again, Fritz Walter, and it's two-nil. And a disastrous five minutes for Leeds United. Lukic made one save but had no chance with Walter's return shot. Well, they say great goal scorers don't, don't score great goals, but they do they do get credit as goals, and look at that. First man in, first man to react from was it Sverenson's shot, Lukic a parry, everybody coming out, Leeds defence trying to come out and play offside. The centre forward sees nothing else but the possibility of a goal. Knock forward towards Chapman. Chested down there by speed. And now it's really imperative that uh, Leeds certainly hold tight at the back now, but now it's just as imperative that they score one themselves. Shut going through, but is stopped by the number four, Dubacic. So in five minutes, it's really gone all wrong for them. Oh, very much so. I mean, they've, they've upped their game. The passing's improved. They've got quicker. They've pushed people forward. Um, they've looked to support from both the defence and from midfield. Leeds, from their part, haven't been able to get a, get a grip of the game. You know, they haven't been able to control the, control the flow of the game. Um, they're, ch they're chasing people now as opposed to getting on the ball and putting passes in. Right. And I don't know whether it's coincidence. We'll just see what happens here. Gaudino, right. hustled by speed. Gaudino again. Shot trying to get back. Gaudino playing it in for Walter Gaudino again. And also you know, they thought they were going to get a corner there. Also you wonder, I suppose what's going through Leeds' mind now, what do we do? Do we just hold firm and settle at 2-0? Or do we say we've got to now take a risk or two and look for uh, for a goal ourselves? There's just so I'm told incessantly downstairs that there's a, a hint of offside about the uh, second goal. Yes, I would think the Leeds would probably think that, probably think it was an offside. They, you know, they, they like to clear the box very quickly. Yes. As you see, the guy in the wide right position is in an offside position. Yes. But if you if you play offside, if you drive out like Leeds do from corners and free kicks, you always do run that risk. Um, in answer to your earlier question, Brian, about what the Leeds do, I think they've got to dig a few trenches now and get themselves back in the game somehow or other. I mean, at the moment, you say, should we go all out attack? They haven't really had enough of the ball in this period to spring any attacks. 
So what do they have to do? Firmly shut the door at the back, and even if it stays at 2-0, you have to say, well, that's the best we can do with tonight. I would yeah. guess so. And, it, and if they do get the chance to break in, somebody like Hutch can get a consolation for them, fine. But at the moment, the last thing they can afford is, is to go behind further. Here's Buck being chased by Dorigo, and Dorigo hadn't quite got the pace to hold him up. It was a foul on a free kick. So they look as if they've done the homework on Dorigo. Buck, every time he's had possession, although he's a flying machine, hasn't once attempted to go on the outside. He's attacked the Rigo on the inside every time. I think, to be fair, as I say, I don't know if it's all coincidence, I think uh, Leeds' problems have stemmed really from the Cantona situation. I mean, they, they lost the goal when the concentration may have been disturbed with Cantona coming off the field, and he was a very, very good outlet for them up front. He was able to hold it and bring people into play. Well, a free kick to Stuttgart. Pity 2-0, both by Fritz Walter. A real problem and a crisis for Leeds. Bronzek shot is charged down by Chris Fairclough. Ruby Schneider. See, Fairclough can't go chasing that. No, I mean, that's exactly the point. Then. See, and it stims off the top of uh, Dorigo's head. If that had gone beyond him and the buck had been away, then Fairclough is way out of his uh, territory. And they are buzzing now, Stuttgart. I hate to say it, but you feel if anybody's going to score the next goal, it's going to be the Germans. Oh, they're playing well now. They are playing very, very well. I mean, they, to be fair to Leeds, Leeds have controlled a fair part of the game. And I was, I was thinking when it was no score, and I can't remember an English, an English side away, away from home in, in, a, in a place like Germany having so many good opportunities to score. I mean, we had the Hodge chance, the speed chance in the air. Chapman had a chance all just prior to um, Stuttgart taking the lead. Free kick to Leeds for the foul on Steve Hodge. John Lukic with it. Up to Valter. And he's on a hat-trick at the moment. Looks for Kurgle on the far side, but only finds David Batty. White. But he's looked a goal scorer, hasn't he? Even apart from the two goals. In the first half, when Leeds were the boss side, he, he was the one you, you're just watching him off the ball, taking up good positions, sniffing things out. Works very hard as well. Looking at him now, even now, he's unmarked. He's stood in amongst all the Leeds defence, and yet he's managed to get himself into an unmarked position. Look, foul on him by shot. Free kick to Stuttgart. A little over a quarter of an hour left. Dupacic. Pulling the ball forward again for Stuttgart. Leeds with plenty back, but again Fronzek getting in behind them once more. Just a flick off the head of uh, Chris Fairclough was enough. The Leeds again looked very vulnerable at the back there, particularly down that flank where Kurgel on the far side is... Oh, he's cutting them to ribbons, isn't he? Every, such a night. Every time he's had something decent to play and he's cutting them to absolute ribbons there. And... All right, Gordon Strachan's trying to offer some advice and some cover to Batty, but Batty looks... I honestly do feel he's got an injury problem, but he, you know, he's in an unaccustomed position and uh, hasn't looked entirely happy with it. A free kick to Stuttgart. Buchwald was going to take it, then he started scampering forward, so Dubacic takes it, and here's Dubacic again. So somewhere up front is Buchwald, who may well cause a problem coming in for this one, but Fairclough got the header in first. Batty to McAllister. Shot. McAllister. And if Leeds can shut it down at 2-0, it leaves them a pretty heavy task in a fortnight's time, but not an impossible one, particularly if the Leeds crowd, which of course they will, get so firmly behind them, and make it an almost intimidating atmosphere for the German visitors. Here's the cross coming in. Can Chapman do anything here? No, it's a bit too high for him. Gaudino, challenged by uh, speed. No foul there, said the referee. McAllister was wanting a little too much time there, but uh, Fairclough, Hodge, he's not really got into the game yet, Steve Hodge. The throw to uh, Leeds, to Rigo. Chapman. Fairclough going in, a foul. Free kick to uh, 
Stuttgart. Oh, contrast between the two coaches there, the two managers. Harold Milkinson looking what he must be at the moment, a very worried man. Struntz pulling the ball forward again. Gaudino. White sticking close to him. Back again for Sverison. The one two played there. Sverison, the Icelandic man. Good challenge by uh, Steve Hodge for the corner. Well, it must have been out of play first. The goal kick. He'll also be wondering, you know, Howard Wilkinson. I mean, they, to be fair to them, they've had a hell of a game against us on Sunday. Um, the Germans have had an extra day's rest, and just whether that'll have any effect in the last 15. He was very disgruntled about uh, playing on Sunday. He thought he had to temper his criticism against any psychological disadvantages players might feel if he made too much of a song and dance about it. Another German down injured. I think it's uh, Walter. Headed back pass by Fairclough. And Lukic knocks it forward and not out, up towards Chapman, but now the whistle's gone and the physios can come on. Well. Course of duty, Brian. Course, Course of, of duty. duty. It didn't yeah. look as bad as all that. To no, me, you, could, you, could, you couldn't have anything. Uh, Chris White completely blameless there. And the last thing he wants to do is come off, isn't it? There's the story of the night, and it's not a very happy one at the moment. As we come here in southern Germany, just past 10 minutes to 10 at night. Stuttgart leading Leeds United by two goals to nil. be a drop wall. Speed and Valter now fully recovered and Valter very sportingly plays the ball back to the possession of Leeds United and Batty plays it forward up to Chapman. What Leeds wouldn't give for a goal now. Strachan. Hodges in there. Can he conjure something up here? Little chip in again by uh, Shutt I think it was on the far side. Yes Carl Shutt provides the corner for Leeds. And they looked very, very threatening, didn't they, in the first half on corners? And it, you know, it'd be a godsend for them if they could just nick one now. But Chris White's in there. Fairclough's in there somewhere, because he's certainly not in a defensive role at the moment. But it came to nowhere. Now he needs to be in a defensive role, because suddenly Stuttgart is springing forward again. Walter's up ahead. But Fairclough has got back this time, supported by speed. And the referee giving a free kick surely to Leeds United. I like this referee, actually. He's let, uh, he's let it's a man's game, as far as he's concerned. He's Brilliant. let a few things go. and yeah. uh, Brilliant, Brian. Brilliant. McAllister. Forward again towards Carl Schutt. Nodded by him towards Fairclough. With Fairclough up there. Lee's still keen, obviously, to get this one goal that would mean so much. 2-0 down at the moment. We come to the closing stages. About 11 minutes of this game to go here in Stuttgart. Gary Speed with the throw. Chapman at the near post might well be the target for him. But he's beaten by Bufo. Speed knocking it in again. Valter gets it away. Batty. Simple ball to Dorigo. Into Batty again. Chapman. McAllister. Oh, he kept his balance nicely there, McAllister. In the end, he's brought down by Struntz. But Leeds keep possession. There's a Stuttgart player down again as Strachan plays the ball in. It's too high for Hodge and easy for Ike Immel. And Immel, who played for his country when he was only 19 years old, the goalkeeper, now 31, gets the ball into touch. And the... Stuttgart uh, physios are in action again. Dubacek is the injured man, the sweeper. Still have their eye on this face-saving goal, Leeds, by pushing Fairclough and White forward at every opportunity, Ron. 
Yes, I mean, once they get into the other half of the field and they can build up some pressure, then I think it's relatively safe to send them forward, particularly, as I say, on the set plays now. But what we don't want to see them do, we don't want to see the two centre-halves just go chasing lost causes and leave it, leave the thing wide open at the back. Two nothings can be reclaimed. They can get two nothings back at Ellen Road. It's going to be a hell of a task, but they can still get it back. They, they, I could never, ever see them getting three back. No. A two they could get back. They could certainly could get, yeah, get to two each in... You know, I'm going to an extra time situation. Well, let's see. Leeds pushing forward there. Stuttgart in just for a moment in a little bit of disarray at the back. And now Dorigo hustling. And Buck getting back there. The back pass. Well, very capably there by Lukic. Up to Chapman. Plays it short for Hodge. This is Carl Schutt. Speed. Shut again. Lifting the pace a little bit now, finding Batty, finding Strachan. But again, Stuttgart get possession. Good firm challenge by Buchwald, who's handled Chapman very well indeed tonight. They were so fearful of uh, Chapman, uh, Chapman's ability, particularly in the air. But Buchwald, very experienced, has done such a good job. And here's Buck, who is very quick indeed. It's another go! 3-0. That's a disaster now for Leeds. As Buck out-sprinted his marker and fired unerringly into the far corner of the Leeds net. The smile of Fronzek says it all. He went past Fairclough. A beautifully angled drive. Lukic looked as though he may have just got a touch on it, but that was all. Yes, I think John Lukic should have saved this, to be fair. I think it's within range of him. I think he should have completed a full hand on that. Gets an ugly little bounce beforehand. But the worrying thing again, once again, is they've attacked down the right-hand side of Leeds, uh, sorry, the left-hand side of Leeds' defence. He's a little bit far over his Lukic there. His position's not brilliant. But I just wonder where Tony Dorigo's gone again. I mean, that's the, the two of the goals absolutely missing from, from sight. And that's the problem you have if you go chasing into false areas. Well, Fritz Walter, having done the damage, is coming off. And they're bringing on Adrian Knopp. Fair haired player there. Well, Walter certainly has done the damage. With his two goals in a matter of five or six minutes, 62 and 68. Getting a great ovation from the Stuttgart crowd, as you can well imagine terrific goal scorer and has proved the point most firmly tonight and on in his place is Knup no mean goal scorer himself in fact he scored twice for Switzerland against Scotland in a World Cup qualifier last week a bit of skirmishing while all that was going on in the crowds Find the right hand goal. I think you'd have to say in the balance of play that a 3 0 scoreline flatters them. Yeah, the last 20 minutes they've been totally uh, dominant. But prior to that, they'd had some very hairy moments for the home team. Kurgle. Struntz. Here comes Stuttgart again. Gaudino stopped by speed. Strachan. Strachan again. Up to Chapman. Shut knocking it forward, but that really is indicative of just how Leeds' play has gone in this second half. After the 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 to go into the next fortnight for Howard Wilkinson with a lot of anxiety too, because the big prize might now just be beyond the grasp of Leeds United. And I think he'll know that if anything else, probably lack of experience, particularly amongst his defenders at this level, has been expensive tonight. McAllister up. So disappointing for Leeds after such a good first half. But 
they just haven't been able to handle Stuttgart once Stuttgart's up the pace got their game going and uh, an interview there with Fritz Walter we can cut away to the action but it's action that might trouble Leeds United as Kurgel goes down that flank again Gaudino's in the middle so too is Knup substitute and they get a corner it came off Batty four minutes of the game left Gaudino with the corner Batty getting it away as far as Struntz Stuckin couldn't find his man and Hodge just clipped Gaudino the referee said no it wasn't anything to get too upset about Gaudino the German crowd has sorry Gaudino was always looking for that trip there once he's chasing this one he's got to be watched very closely and he's being watched by Fairclough it's a goal kick Pretty forlorn hope, maybe, but with two and a half minutes left, if Leeds still were to snatch one, it would open up all sorts of possibilities with the away goal for the second leg at Ellen Road. I think it's also fair to say they haven't, um, whether it's because the Germans have pushed into the game more, they certainly haven't controlled the game much at all in the second half, Leeds. They haven't passed the ball over. I know they're not a passing side. But you can't afford, you know, it's a saying I've got at this level, you cannot afford to give the ball away uh, too cheaply. Hook. Dorigo stopping him on that occasion. You wonder how much they had the sting taken out of them, Ron, by having to play on Sunday. Whether that's having an effect, whether... Howard Wilkinson will feel, I suppose he will say, you'll accuse me of making excuses if I do, but they certainly have not lasted the pace, particularly in this second half. And I can't believe it's the same Stuttgart side I was watching in the first half. The movement's been good. This fella's caused a lot of the problems. Strong, he's, he's, pushed, he's pushed forward considerably more in the second half. Set his stall out with the three shots just after half time. And I think they all took the lead from that. Uh, Brookvold pushed into midfield. He drove the game. Leeds for their part couldn't get out of couldn't get out of the camp at the back. They were they were staying there, couldn't pass the way out, couldn't play the way out. Chapman didn't hold much up for them. And once Cantona had gone, then they, they had a big, big problem. I certainly think they missed the big fella probably more than they would have thought. And what you have to worry about also, Ron, is that uh, if indeed it's uh, a hamstring, that might well just knock him out for the second leg as well. Well, maybe. It, you know, it may be, it may be it's, it's tightened up a little bit from having the two games um, in a short period of time. That You know, he, he put in an awful lot of effort in on Sunday, and maybe, you know, that's, that's the problem. Let's hope so. Leeds United don't forget later on we can also see live the second half of Manchester United against Torpedo of Moscow from Old Trafford that's fair club Sverison how much do you think it may have had to play in the second half I mean Strack was very influential in the first half wasn't he when he was allowed like a free reign to go here, there and everywhere. Now, second half, he's been more or less tied down to that right side of midfield and had to do an awful lot of backtracking uh, to help bat Batty with his problems. Dubacic. White getting it away. And, in fact, there was a foul by Knup, which the 
Stuttgart coach hardly agrees with. They're wanting the final whistle now, would you believe? There we go. Knup. Kurgles on the far side. White. Dorigo. Up to Hodge. A foul on him and a free kick to Leeds. Hodge has gone down. It's a free kick. Now, if only. I mean, how it does practice and practice and practice and restart. Spent a lot of time this morning practicing set pieces. Uh, taking uh, the number five Struntz off, who's had a terrific game, a summer signing, cost a million pounds from Bayern Munich, and he's been so influential, the number five. On comes the number 14, Gunter Schaefer, very experienced, 30 years old, over 300 appearances for Stuttgart. Strachan playing it in, but surely while the substitution's being made, the kick can't be taken. Well, now Strachan gets another go at it. He's done well, Struntz, no doubt about that. I wonder whether some of the Leeds players should be pushing on the line. They've got defenders on the line and obscuring the keeper's view to goal. It was Pede who put it there, and it's Fairclough who put it over the top. Oh, well, they claim that the ball was over the line. Leeds are claiming there the ball's over the line most vehemently, so much so that I think uh, Rooney Larson is getting the uh, yellow card out and giving it to Steve Hodge. He argued that the ball was over the line. Well, this might give us a clue, will it? No, not that picture, but maybe we can get a shot of that sometime. But Leeds clearly claiming that uh, the header, which I think came from Gary Speed, was over the line. I must confess, when he hit it, as soon as he headed it, Brian, I actually thought that was a goal. Todd is booked. It stays at 3-0. And that might just sum their night up, might it? Even the second rebound header was a good, still a good opportunity to narrow the deficit. Speed again with a header. Stopped by Dubacic. Here's to Rigo. Gaudino. Leeds are getting back. Lukic just comes storming out of his goal. I hope he can get there. To Rigo playing it to speed. Not forward again, it's Carl Schutt chasing this one. Chapman's waiting in the middle, but he'll wait in vain. The ball beat Schutt over the byline. He played three minutes of time, added on. And Immel has been largely untroubled in the second half until that moment a minute or so ago. So dominant of Stuttgart being in the second half. Dorigo with the throw. White knocking it forward, up towards Chapman again, in shackles there from Buchwald. McAllister. Over the head of Batty, not chasing. Fairclough going with him. And doing well enough to get it away to Chris White as Leeds come forward again. Well, over four minutes of time added on has been played. Dorigo knocking it forward quickly again towards Carl Schutt. Schutt trying to knock it down. Or rather, Hodge trying to knock it down for Schutt. Callister, Batty, McAllister. Not forward again. Chapman, McAllister. Dorigo. Now, Dorigo onto the right foot. Corner. That's their best best passing moment of the second half. They must have put seven passes, seven very good passes. And you wonder what might have happened if they'd have been prepared to play that way a little, a bit more patient and not give the ball away and build the way through a little bit more. Strachan streaming across to this uh, corner flag to take the corner. Everybody up for Leeds now. Trying to, it's a poor corner from Strachan and White just got a touch on it into the side netting, a goal kick. again looking at the watch there's Fritz Walter who with the moustache there who caused so much of the damage Struntz who was such a good player in the midfield Stuttgart a revelation in the second half look offside free kick
Well, if Leeds get a good start, which they certainly need at Ellen Road, it's still not beyond them, Ron. No, they've got mountains to climb them. I thought at 2 nothing they could still produce something, but they've certainly got mountains Stratton to plays climb. Stratton it in, the final whistle. And the Christoph Baum has led Stuttgart to a very important win here by three goals to nil. It's a bad night for Leeds United, which promised so much at half-time when they looked well in command. Uh, with no great problems, and then those two goals by Fritz Walter after 62 and 68 minutes, with Buck piling another one on with just eight minutes of the game left, has left Leeds with an enormous job to do in the second leg at Ellen Road in a fortnight's time. The problem started from the moment Eric Cantona was injured, and as he was seeking to get off, so Stuttgart struck, and from that moment onwards, Things looked particularly dismal for Leeds United. So, Ron Atkinson, as we wait to see whether we can get an interview with Howard Wilkinson, who must be a very disappointed man tonight. Well, obviously, they've got to get it out of their mind now. OK, let's... Say. Sorry, Ron, let's go down and join Howard Wilkinson. Howard, desperately disappointing after a very good first half. Very disappointing. Uh, I was nearly as disappointed when you interrupted me whilst I was working as well. Would you like me walking into a news broadcast while you're talking? I'm trying to do my job, you're trying to do yours, but did you... Did you... No, don't do your, when, you do, when you're interviewing me, you're not doing your job properly. Fair yes, problem. I'm disappointed, obviously. Very, very disappointed. But the game's not over yet. Whilst there's life, this hope. Thank you. The nerves are beginning to show a little bit there uh, with Howard Wilkinson, I think. We'll take a short break at this point. We'll have more action from uh, the Leeds game. We'll show you the goals. And we've also got action from Old Trafford as well. Stay with us. <laughs> 